The Devil's Game by Pavlo Dmitrashuk Part 7 Actor Actor has the same spelling in both English and Portuguese. In Ukrainian, it's actor. A huge theater full of spectators who are seated and waiting for the play. They are chatting with each other and the whole hall is filled by their murmuring. Spectator 1 has a happy mask in front of his collection of masks. Spectator 2 has attentive mask. Spectator 1 Have you seen this play? It's astonishing! Every time I see it, I feel like it's my first. The plot twists always catch me by surprise, even though I know they are coming. The theater's lights go out and the curtains get lifted. Actor is standing on stage under the spotlight, immobile, while striking a pose and holding one of his masks in front of the others. Look, it's about to begin! Spectator 2 puts nervous mask in the front. Hush, let's not disturb the other members of the audience. Don't worry, everyone talks during this play. Look! Low murmuring all around the theater. See? No one will mind us as long as we don't talk too loudly. What would a play be without having anyone to discuss it with, right? Can't we discuss it after the play ends? Are you kidding? Who would ever remember half of the things that one might want to say after so much time goes by? It's always better to say what you think when you think it, or else the essence of the thought gets lost as just a memory. Carpe diem, friend! Grasp every moment you live through and experience it to each fullest. Two puts in the size of mask in the front. Well, I guess it's everybody else is doing it. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. The actor's voice is the most powerful of them all. It doesn't matter what he says, he will always be heard the most, or he won't be the actor anymore. Being heard is his job after all. I suppose. Actor starts moving forward with ample and gracious steps while gesticulating his hands theatrically. He is holding a mask that resembles a skull and his melancholic mask in the front. Actor. Ah, oh, poor Yorick. So long I have known you. If only you could know how much I loved you. If only I remembered how it felt to be you. Alas, the past belongs to the past, and the future is a past yet to be. Company you have plenty, dear Yorick, for necessity demanded me to become many. So do not despair, for besides the good company, you will always have my affection and a pedestal in my memory of the first one that I was. Two puts inquisitive mask in the front. Why is that mask in the shape of a skull? Because having only one mask would greatly restrict anyone. I mean, think about it. It would be like a condition, having to react exactly the same way to everything that happens in your life, having to be exactly the same way always. It would be the existence of a statue, the personality of an object, a vegetative state of mind. Two puts interested mask in the front. Ah, a vegetative state of mind. That's an interesting thought. 
because you have the interested mask. If you were a vegetable, you wouldn't be able to get interested. Look what's going to happen next. They both look at the actor who is continuing his monologue. Actor. With time, I've needed many companions to share your place, old friend. Companions that would allow me to perceive the world better and become so much more than you could ever be by yourself. Like happiness, puts out mask of happiness. Sadness, puts happiness in the same hand as skull mask, puts out mask of sadness. Anger, puts sadness in the same hand as the others, tries reaching for another mask in his head's collection, but skull mask falls down and breaks. The crowd gasps. Just look at the special effects in this play. Unbelievable! Do put surprised mask in the front. Yeah, I see. The mask isn't really from his collection, so it doesn't hurt to break it. He let it break on purpose, right? Of course. He makes it look so natural that it looks like he messed up and dropped it. But it's all part of the act. This happens on every performance of this play. Just imagine how much it would hurt if he shatters part of his mind just like that. The pain could kill someone. Actor puts mourning mask in the front while kneeling near the broken mask. Actor. I should have died hereafter. There would have been a time for such a word. Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow. Is there truly any mask that is eternal, universal, the one and only? Our faces of the past get shattered so that there is room in our collection for new ones. New lies to replace the old ones. For how can one say that what we were yesterday is more real and honest and true than what we are today? How, I asked you? Life is but a dancing shadow, a skilled actor who lies and deceives, as dishonesty is his craft, his tool so that he convinces all that he is telling the truth, all including himself. It is a tale told by a jester, full of certainty and belief, its meaning unattainable. Notice how the actor is representing on the stage by moving in a theatrical way and by shuffling between these different masks, one for each character. Every time he puts a different mask in the front of his collection of personas, he gets changed. Even his body acts accordingly to the personality he's incorporating. How is it even possible for him to have so many masks in his head when we in the crowd can only have a few? Oh, so you think that every person has a specified limit for the amount of masks they can make for themselves through the life? One puts on judgmental mask, looks at two. Two puts uneasy mask on. Yes, you might have a point there. One looks back at the stage, puts excited mask on. Ah, look, the best part is about to start. Actor stays on his knees for a bit, then slowly collects the pieces of the broken mask, gets up and walks to the edge of the stage. He makes a jest of throwing the pieces at the crowd and the front row gasp, but as he reveals his palms, the pieces are gone.
Was that a magic trick? I still don't understand how he does it. So awesome. It's like the piece is sunk into his hands. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. The last monologue is about to begin. The actor covers his mask that's in the front with his palms and takes a few unbalanced steps back. He starts chuckling, then laughing loudly. When he removes his hands, a mask of maddened bitter joy is in the front. I've never seen a mask like that before. Yeah, I heard that the actor is the only one who has that one. A true rarity of character. The actor takes three solid steps forward, again to the edge of the stage, lifts one of his hands and starts speaking. This is the excellent foppery of the world, that when we are seeking fortune, often the surfeit of our own behavior, we blame the neighbor, the relative, and the ruler of our catastrophes, as if we were losers by oppression, idiots by misinformation, thwarted, held back, and downtrodden by an enemy's dominance, enslaved, entangled, and conditioned by a force we are unable to resist, and all that we have failed in because of an unknown conspiracy that continues on. An admirable evasion of weakling man to place all responsibility of his inability on those who are more able than himself. My maker has shaped me in a way so that I can make my own judgment of good and evil. I would still have been seen as a demon by some, even if he had taught me only the kindest and most universally accepted ideas of popular goodness. Actor looks at the spectators on the higher levels. Ah! Oh. There you are, the god-makers of the new world. My cue is a devilish smile, with a laugh like that of the last human alive. Oh, these apocalypses do portend these derisions. Me, la, sol, fa. <laughs> the actor starts laughing first in an elegant way and progressively more and more deranged. Starting by the highest levels of the theater, the spectators start getting up and clapping until everyone is doing so. The actor stops his laughter as the applause becomes louder, puts the previous mask behind and pulls out a happy and grateful mask in the front as he takes a knee in the middle of the stage. What a performance! Yeah, it was quite something. I told you, every time I see this play, it just looks better and better. I feel like there are more details and messages with every new performance. Oh, really? What are the new messages you noticed today? Uh, I don't know. I I, I just felt like there was more stuff going on the last time. Oh. What about you? What did you feel? Hmm. I, uh, I see many possible interpretations. The one I think of as the likeliest to be the real message is this. At this very moment, the play is over and he is thanking the public for their applauses. Thus, he is putting a happy, grateful mask in front of the others. All right, what else? His second mask is blank. This symbolizes the ability of actors to create new characters and new personalities as they need. The actor is but a puppet, and the strings attached to him 
It feels like the whole thing just makes sense, right? Yeah, and there's much more. Oh, tell me, what else do you feel? The message, it goes beyond the stage. The public is no different. They are articulated puppets with a collection of masks. They're different characters, different impulses. Their collection is much smaller, however, as their ability of creating new personas is lesser than that of the actor. Clapping gradually decreases in volume. They sit on the chairs and clap to the performer, but their hands are tied to strings which go to the upper floor of the theater's audience, thus meaning that they are controlled by the upper puppets. Those ones aren't free either, as the next level of the audience has their string, and so onward. One by one, the crowd stops clapping. A few start looking at two. Each time a new floor of the audience emerges, the lesser the strings there will be, and the lesser the puppets in control of other puppets there are. No one is clapping. Everyone is looking at two. Hey, man, it's cool and all, but it, it's, 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 it's just a momentary feeling, right? A short impulse, right? Anyway, I think you should think a bit less loudly. I'm pretty sure I've gotten pretty close to the intended message, though. I might be wrong, but if we think about what the actor has said, we notice some interesting metaphors. And if we read between the lines... Look, look, I really don't think you should be saying stuff like that. It might be seen as problematic. The very structure of this theater symbolizing the stratification of human society and the godlike power of the upper ranks of people who are above all. They do, however, have direct control over only a few, the lower elite, which controls the ones in the lower floor and so onward, until it comes to... Stop! Are you ready? you to stop god damn it us that's an interesting theory but let's not get too involved in uncertain possibilities okay you're overthinking it okay just trust your gut feeling and don't rationalize it too much it kills the mood you know what I mean. Two notices that everyone is looking at him, puts nervous mask in the front. Y yeah, yeah, I, I get the message. My gut feeling, right? That's right. Now, why don't you tell me what you think about the actor himself? without deviating too much into things that are unrelated. Hmm, right, the actor, of course. The stage actor's strings don't follow the same rules as ours. Everyone but two puts judgmental mask in the front. Two sees it and puts scared mask in the front. I, I, I mean, I, I'm talking about him. It has nothing to do with us. Everyone puts attentive mask in the front. Two puts relieved mask in the front. They are tied to his arms and legs, and though going up too, 
they bend on iron rings attached to a bigger puppet cross, which is part of his character in the play. The strings go back to the actor's hand, where he controls his own actions with a smaller cross. The large cross is only on the stage, though. This means that though on the stage the actor can achieve a form of self-control, in real life he's just another puppet, taking part in the structure of power. In fact, seeing that the actor's job depends fully on his popularity, he is one of those who depend on the system and on what is the current accepted morality, trend or demand the most. For example, actors will meddle into politics which they aren't specialized in and will support the popular opinion so their plays are watched and their pockets are full even though sometimes they might not notice their own hypocrisy. The actor is also a puppet, although one with a much greater choice of masks. I do realize this might sound as a harsh criticism of the professional actors, but as an actor myself, at least in a way, I wouldn't feel insulted, for what I'm describing is the basis of the mechanism of which we actors are part of, the great play, La Grande Masquerade, Human Life. This is just an idea. Yes or no? Y yes, of course. Just a silly theory. Two laughs in a shy way. Everyone but one loses interest and starts having their own conversations. One puts relieved mask on, whispers to two. Thank you. That was a bit dangerous. Don't play it so close anymore. Yeah, sorry. Tell me more about your idea, though. I can't admit it in the front of the others. But you picked my interest a bit. Your theory feels... How should I say this? Real. Thank you. I thought I was going crazy for a second with uh, all the pressure of the gaze of everyone on me all at once. I wonder how he manages to handle it. Tu looks at the actor, who is still in the middle of the stage, thanking the people who are congratulating him for the play. Tell me more! I want to know more! The true actor, the actor in life, can, in theory, remain with a certain amount of independence. This special kind of puppet sees the strings and plays the role that he is expected to play, climbing the ranks on his way to freedom, not realizing that though, though the ones at the top are holding the strings, they are also controlled a bit by each string of the many puppets that they pull, for the puppet and the puppet master influence each other mutually, though to a different degree. It doesn't matter how much we'll try to fight it. As flawed humans, we are only capable of living happily in society, where we depend on each other and eternally entangle on each other's strings. It's inevitable. You say humans. Haven't you called us puppets before? Yes, we are puppets. Our shape is humanoid, though. We see each other as humans and call each other humans. In a way, we are humans. The problem is that we 
don't realize to what extent we are also puppets. Why did you say it's inevitable that we would entangle ourselves in each other's strings? Isn't your point in exposing that hidden truth to avoid the entanglement? No, I'm just making a reasonable conclusion from what I perceive. I'm not trying to make a specific point. I do think we need strings, though. Why? Because we are weak. As fragile humans, we need lies to appease each other and strings to support each other. Some people are gifted enough to control the strings from the top, while others are so limited that they can't even have any control of themselves. The rulers have, after all, a limited amount of control over what exactly we do. Sometimes all they can do is send us in the general direction that they want us to go and hope that we will do as they say. Are you going to attempt to rebel now that you know about this? Not necessarily. If the rulers are doing their job well, if the puppet masters are skilled enough, then there is no need of rebellion. A structure of power always needs to exist. It's the organization of the greatest achievement of us weak puppets. Civilization. Why is civilization the greatest achievement? because it enables an infinite amount of possibilities for other great achievements. Hmm, I feel you. Go on. Only in civilization can we achieve the peak of the potential of our natural talents, and the ones who try to fight it will have their strings cut loose and will fall to the ground as the powerless hell dolls they are. These strings are not only oppression, they are the bonds that link us together, that make us stronger as long as the puppet masters are doing a good job. Rebellion is only useful if they aren't. I... I understand. I'm glad that you do. All that staring made me think that I was going to get burned at the stake of something. Both put cheerful masks on and laugh a bit. They look back at the actor. Did you say something about the mask after this one? Yes, it's blank. It means that after playing this character, after wearing the happy mask, the actor is not going to play any other character. Does that mean that he's going to sleep after this? Yes. Does that mean that this is how he actually feels? Maybe. Why maybe? If he won't play anything else outside of the stage from the end of the play until he goes to sleep, does that not mean he's being honest? Who knows? In the end, all we have are masks. Is it even possible to call some of them honest and others dishonest just because of the timing on which they are worn? True. And even if it were possible, who knows if he, the actor himself, believes in the masks that he wears. After all, that's all we are. A collection of masks. Does our faith and preference for some make the others a lesser part of ourselves? One put teasing mask in the front. How philosophical! Let me put my impressed mask in the front. Two puts annoyed mask in the front. 